Hello, cousins. Welcome to SASMAS, our spirituality and support symposium. Think morning witchy chats around a warm campfire. The recording has started, and by participating in SAS, you agree to read and accept the terms of engagement, which we post in the chat. We ask that you mute during the recording for clarity during the meeting or and for the after play. We will now get started with a few announcements. Oh, hi. That's me. Somehow I always am like surprised by it. <laughs> but uh, so sorry. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, we were talking earlier on the live too that we do we do post the SAS masses to our public YouTube um, channel. And so, of course, you can be on or off camera. You can change your name if you want. Um, but we let like the people of Instagram know, you know, so if they wanted to check out some of our previous sasses, or if you want to check out some previous sasses, um, they can be like, we don't put like the topics cause we cover so many topics in these meetings. So you just like intuitively pick one, <laughs> see what you get. Um, so to, yeah, for, for today, um, Actually, an hour after this meeting ends, we still have some spots left for Life as Magic that Gemery is facilitating. We had a Life as Magic in January, and that one had sold out, so we decided to do a second one. So that is today. Then on the 16th, um, we have the Enchanted Hearth Work Group um, work workshop. And so if you, uh, if you do follow us along on social media, there was a lot of questions um, or a lot of interest and a lot of weigh-ins about um, interacting with the spirit of your home and how to do that, different ways that people may do that. So we wanted to offer a space to talk about it. So we have that workshop. Um, yes, and we're in March. Spring is doing its springing energy. The moons are doing their moon energy. It's definitely a shift in energy here. Um if you are new to the foundations program, feel free to like message us on the website anytime or email support at brightanddark.org. All of those places get um, you to where we can answer your questions. So don't hesitate um, if if you're if you've just joined and you like need assistance about navigating the program, about the workbooks, about the members area, any question that you may have, we want to make sure you feel good and supported um, in, in the process here. So yeah, just let us know. Um, we have, I do want to um, just give a heads up that every year we have an annual in-person convergence, which is amazing. And we've you know, trying to like figure out how often to like have retreats and have convergences and we've played around with different things. But the the annual convergence that we have um, is the autumnal convergence. And that one for sure, we're going to be putting on every year. It is in the Oregon area and we have not picked a, an exact location, but it is going to be in Oregon, um, probably within like an hour from the airport um, from Portland and um, the tickets are on sale. So uh, you can check out the ticket portion in the members area. It does include um, all of the food. So the only thing that hasn't been posted yet is the lodging. But we do like to give a plenty of heads up. So if people need to save or make arrangements, take time off from work, whatever you need to do. Having the, um, the virtual rituals are amazing. Um, having an in-person ritual is, um, if you've never done that before, it is an experience like no other. So I just wanted to put that out there for those of you that may not know about it. And with that, thank you for listening. Ta -da! We could all go on and on and, oh, I forget that microphones are a thing. <laughs> there we go. Um, we could go on and on and on and on about the autumnal convergence and how like it's a it's a whole curated experience too and there's so many layers to it so if you ever have a question about it or you're like on the fence of whether or not to go you can ask any of the like after dark witches like hey did you go to the convergence what's that all about 
and they'll just like blah, 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 blah. so <sighs> hi good morning how about that uh new moon in pisces huh <laughs> i cackle um, we, for those of you that are here for the first time, we, this is completely unscripted and I'm only talking to get everyone kind of thinking, uh, we're waiting for, for us to like catch a flow at some point, someone's going to be like, you know what? I kind of want to weigh in on that. Or, you know what? I, uh, I'm feeling inspired to talk about this, or I am curious about this, and we'll just kind of dive into it. Uh, this is a, a gloriously neurodivergent space, and so we all will get on soapboxes. We will all like, you know, blah, 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 about something, and you are allowed to take up space. You don't have to apologize for uh, jumping into like a special interest or something like that, that like goes off on a whole like side quest. We love a good side quest and we, uh, it is very common to, to be like, blah, 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 and then completely lose your train of thought, like in front of everyone that happens all the time. So don't like, you can feel whatever you want to feel about it, but <laughs> it happens all the time. Uh, it's totally a thing. Um, Ocean's hand is up. So if you if you have something that you want to talk about or you want to like weigh in, like, did we already go over that? We already went over that. So we got this. Do the thing. <laughs> that means you, Ocean. Killing okay. <laughs> Killing it. <laughs> I love how you can't even see me, but I put my hands up in that exact same way right before you did. So that's amazing. Um, <laughs> uh, or maybe maybe my mannerisms are just notable at this point. <laughs> um, that's always the fun part is where the psychology and the magic meets for me. But I really wanted to talk about uh, joy right now. It's been so highlighted for me lately and I was watching a documentary on um one of those uh teen what it, like difficult teen programs like misbehavior like a uh, behavioral adjustment or whatever programs yeah I was watching a documentary on one of those and one of the culty things that they would tell the students to like fear monger them was you create what you fear. And that stuck with me because I was like, I wonder what I would say if someone said that to me, especially where I'm at right now. And that phrase just kind of like stuck around with me. And I was thinking, I was like, you know, joy is so much more powerful than fear because it's, it's, uh, Well, I, I guess I have to say that for me, like, I obviously I can't say that for everyone, but I believe that my joy is more powerful oh. than my fear. Persephone, she wants to play. She's like, I heard joy, let's go. <laughs> um, oh. Stop, relax. Thank you. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, she totally hijacked my train of thought. Um, I was thinking that uh, oh. <laughs> you're not going to let me talk, are you? Just let me get one more thought out. Just one more. Um, sorry. Oh. oh, my goodness. Um, <sighs> I had a point, I swear. Oh my gosh, my dog definitely hijacked my train, which is crazy. She doesn't even have opposable thumbs, like how. Um, she learned it from her father. <laughs> I, th I think my, my thought train was along... Um,
how our thoughts do create our reality. And so at first I was a little bit like wary of that phrase, but then I kind of realized that Mm -hmm. uh, we actually create what's safest for our nervous system. And so if we believe that uh, like the, if we, if our beliefs are still being structured and controlled under like a certain regimen, then our belief is that that regimen is what keeps us safe. And um, cause I, I keep, I keep thinking about like, why would somebody create a reality around them that's violent? If we create our realities, why are there like, you know, difficult realities and stuff. And, you know, why would we, why would I create struggle for myself? I guess was always my question. And um, it, you know, it keeps coming back and I've had a couple of witches tell me this, this definitely didn't come to me on my own, but it's, it keeps coming back to like how, um, uh, Our, or my, my joy would not feel the same had I not known the depths of sorrow that I felt. It would just feel normal. And I think about that a lot when it comes to celebrities. I keep thinking about people who are highly privileged. Um, and how like unhappy they always seem to be, even though they seem to have all of their needs and more met. And um, cause happiness has been a question for me from like day one is like, what what is happiness? What does that look like? What does that feel like? What is that? And so like from a young age, I was always trying to imagine the most extravagant, you know, things that I thought would make me happy. And so it's, uh, it's really come back to a point of like, my joy was never outside of me. It was never outside of experiencing myself and being loved, like for that, like, And I think somehow privilege, actually, the more privileged somebody is, the harder it is to work your way to authenticity. It feels like adversity forces authenticity a lot of the time. It kind of forces you to like reckon with yourself or or not like or, you know, completely avoid it. Like one of the two extremes. Um. Well, I I guess I can't say you. I am trying really hard to word things in the way that they're about me. It's really easy to want to project my reality like onto the world so that my experiences are validated, but it's it's the more that I work on on that, it's on like framing it as like this is actually my experience and getting to know that other people have different experiences and giving the space for other people to say, actually, I do experience the same thing is a lot more validating, but it is a lot more vulnerable. Um, and that, that's the end of my thought train. I don't have anything else. I, I found the caboose. <laughs> um, so if anybody wants to pick up on any of that or change the subject, that is my two cents. Does anyone want to like talk or share about what they're experiencing 
like either physically or in their lived experience uh, that you believe is influenced by this new moon in Pisces? Or even if you have a practice either established or one that you're considering? Anybody? Oh, hi, Danny. Go ahead. I want to start off by saying I was not planning on talking at all today because I'm new and this is my first one, but um, I'm heavily laden with water signs. I'm really into astrology and I have a Pisces son. So um, I have been having for almost a week, almost feels like migraine headaches and massive downloads. And I just met one of the spirit guides that I have that I didn't know I had um, the other day. There's been all kinds of weird and wonderful. And I do mean wonderful, even though my face doesn't look like as wonderful. <laughs> Partially, I'm terrified to be talking to strangers about this. Um, so I'm working through that as we go through this, <laughs> as I talk about this. Um, I am very much influenced by the moon. And um, this one is really kicking my ass in a in a great way um but the i finally realized i have a some blockages <laughs> between chakras that are both culturally and unfortunately family of origin and probably generational crap that i've been dealing with and i've been working through that i was so grateful to find you guys last month um with doing shadow work it's just been really hard to do because it just feels like I've had 14 tons of bricks on me trying to work through all this because it's not just all my stuff. However, what I'm trying to get to is I had this massive breakthrough today where all I kept hearing, there were two things going on. There was a lot of anger and grief from a particular age, my four to six year old inner child um, about a particular family member um, and not being able to develop a relationship with that person. And how that's affected like the whole rest of my life until the last six months, maybe. Um, and that's been a lot of shadow work. But also, I have this really deep hunger for this new depth. And I mean depth, not level. Depth. Depth of grounding and depth of authenticity. And I was just journaling today about what that meant. It was shocking the hell out of me. And I like to cuss, so I hope I'm not offending anybody. Um, you know, I don't seem like the type of people I would be offending with that, but hey, disclaimer. Um, so yeah, so basically I've been wandering around alternately, apparently scaring my cat who would normally be, he's my familiar, he'd normally be right up here with me and, you know, waving his tail in my face and stuff and being generally annoying. Um, but he's hiding under the bed right now because I suspect that my energy is changing significantly right now. And he doesn't really know what to do with that. Cause I'm not being the mom that he's known for the last nine and almost 10 years. Um, and I'm oddly okay with that. Normally that would like stress me out a little bit. Cause he's like my most meaningful relationship <laughs> right now. Um, but I'm rambling on so much. I think I'm done. The way I'm handling this is basically just keep checking in and going, okay, do we need to cry now? Do we need to go for a walk? Do we need to eat? I have been flushing my system out. I can't tell you how many bottles of water and cups of tea I've had already. I'll probably go off screen here in a minute so I can go make some more tea because I am utterly freezing. So I'm alternating with whatever the level up is, freezing my arse off or burning up. So there's a lot going on over here. And thank you for letting me share. And I don't, I see two hands up, but I can't remember. I don't, didn't see if it was Roxanne first or Jenny first. So um, Jenny's first. Okay. You're good. <laughs> um, as far as the moon, I... I have been feeling really 
drawn to be inside myself and really look within. Um, I haven't been very outgoing the last week or so. Um, and I think that that's okay. I think that we need that introspection sometimes. So um, as far as normally with a water moon, I would rather be outside, but um, I got new cards and a new book for the cards. And so I've been coloring and that has made me more introspective and um, I think I needed it. So, and welcome Danny. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so like everything else, realizing later that it aligns with what I'm doing right now and the path I'm choosing to take right now. Um, with the new moon in Pisces and with this being, you know, water sign very much tied to emotions and everything else, I'm realizing it's aligning with a new um, endeavor I'm taking on with really processing some of those deeper emotions that have been stuck. Um, I'm going on this whole journey for like the next six months of really learning how to regulate my nervous system, what that really means and how it actually feels to process like fully some of the emotions that are stuck. Um, so yeah, it's so crazy. Like Danny started talking and I was like, oh wait, yeah, I am doing something right now that aligns with this. And I was like, okay, so yeah, it's definitely aligned with the steps I'm taking. And it's always like a pleasant surprise to see how intuitive things do happen in our lives when we start really like leaning into it and allowing it to go and I'll taking those like chances that are pretty scary and you're not sure how things are going to end up and how are you going to be able to do this thing? Is it going to work out? Have you just like made the biggest mistake of your life? <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's interesting how everything kind of lines up when you are really leaning into your t intuition and taking this leap of faith, diving into the deep end when you're just guessing that it's deep. <laughs> you never know. It might be shallow water. Um, so yeah, that's, that's definitely what I'm experiencing right now. And I'm also kind of nervous because the fact that my dreams have given me a break lately, I'm like, oh no. What's going to come up now that I'm noticing this? <laughs> so, yeah. But that's all I have. I'm thinking of like three different things and weighing like which direction to go because... Like those of you that have been here for a while, sometimes when I talk about certain things uh, openly with like groups like this, uh, it's it's triggering in a way that I don't expect because I so like plainly talk about my life in general. And uh, and so I'm trying to be a little bit more mindful of some of the things that I talk about when people don't know my relationship with my life. Uh, does that make sense? So, uh, yeah. Well, I'm getting really big, like heavy right now is all focused toward that choosing the reality that you want to participate in. Uh, and when you like sit and imagine what your ideal 
balanced life, day-to-day life looks like, right? As opposed to your mainstreaming life, which reality are you wanting to participate in more, right? And for a lot of us, we get hung up on these, like we have to make these big changes in order for that alignment to to happen like your, uh, and when I say like a more balanced life, that's going to look different for all of us. Like, uh, again, my brain just went like in three different directions. Asking yourself what your dream life looks like and choosing to do little things. Like for me, I want to be more present with my life. Uh, That busy go, 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 go doesn't work for my system in a lot of different ways. Uh, And those ways are the things it's like, oh, do I talk about that or do I not talk about that? But I need to be very present with my life. And I would like to have the rest of my life around me to be like supportive of that balance. And that looks like of like very monastic in nature. So when I'm eating my meals, it's with a can I have a candle lid it's a ceremonial practice that I'm doing right and that started really small it started with choosing to like cultivate a relationship with a bowl actually and it just like changed everything that's what I mean by the small things if you feel like uh, growing your own food and and participating more actively in like how you feed your like physical body and you're you live in an apartment that would look like you know starting to grow like small plants in your windowsill or uh, getting like a grow light and learn how to grow vegetables under a grow light or something like that just small things so that you can authentically experience that reality more uh that's what i've been getting a lot of the undercurrent and when i say undercurrent it means the conversations i have with witches as well it's not just the the channeled shit it's these kinds of conversations um, I hear it on repeat in in the things that you guys are like talking about and experiencing also. It's very validating, guys. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, go ahead, Stephanie. Hello, everyone. And hello, Danny. I'm new too. Um so what Ocean said at the beginning is still sticking in my head. And so just a thought on that. So I think you said what they were telling those kids is like you are, you you create your own fear or you create the fear that you have or something in that realm. And that statement like caused to think of that creates fear in me and like just the thought of like oh you create what your fears are but then you become afraid of your own fear right like I'm afraid to be afraid because oh my god like I can now I create all these fears and they become these monsters and now I have this self-fulfilling prophecy and so it makes you smaller and smaller and like oh god I better not be afraid of anything because then I'll create all these terrifying monsters and I don't know if I'm afraid to be a Broadway actor because I've never done it but I better not try because then I might be scared and more and more and more fear and so I just think yeah if that is what they were saying obviously that's dumb (laughs) and we should embrace our fears and go towards our fears and love our fears and you know hold them and yeah so anyways that was what hit me in that realm and with the moon's energy and the uploads and the rockiness and the yeah I too Danny have been in a 
it was smooth sailing and then a hurricane and then a rainbow and then a lightning strike all in 24 hours. <laughs> and I keep feeling like, I feel like I'm like I'm making chili and like there's a missing ingredient, but it's like important, like salts or like, you know, it's not just like paprika or something like it's like garlic or like brown sugar or something like it's it's kind of important. Oh, what does this say? Lower my hand. Oh, um, sorry, I got distracted. And I don't know what this itchy feeling is about. I don't know why. I don't know what it's pointing towards. I don't know. I don't know. But I just get this itchy, like, mmm, there's something, there's something missing. Like there's, and I mean, I could eat the chili, it's fine, whatever, but it just, mmm, there's a little something I need. I have no idea what realm it's in. I don't know if it's in my practical life or spiritual life or I don't know, but something needs a little, needs a little salt or vinegar or something. Just, that's the vibe that I'm in in this moment, in this hour, but probably in 20 minutes, I don't know, another storm's going to come along. That's all I have to say. Sorry. I don't know if I'm next or Petra. I just actually really wanted to say that I just love that analogy so much that it got me to sit up out of bed and come on camera. <laughs> so I was like, that's the best thing I've heard in like three days. So thank you. <laughs> and Go Petra. Ahead, Petra. I need to put my phone on do not disturb or else it will vibrate while I'm talking or something random um I just had a bit of a way in like with my own experience and also like kind of a uh, as someone who has like 70 I've joked I'm like 70 percent of my chart is water like the human body um <laughs> so it's like you know uh I have had a different experience this this Pisces moon and the water moons have been different for me. I think like I have, I'm a Pisces rising, so like Cancer Sun Scorpio moon. I put it all in the chat, but yeah, there's just a lot. There's a lot of water in there and then my nodes are in North node is in Taurus, South node is in Scorpio. So like the last 2 years of eclipse seasons were just like, "Hey, will we can we kick your ass up and down the block?" Okay, cool. We're going to do that. And it's just like, are you ready for just all the Scorpio energy? Would you just like to like be burned ash and then Phoenix again and then be burned ash? And then, yeah, that was just the life. So um, I'm, even though we're moving into Libra and Aries, which are like cardinal sign plate, like uh, nodes, which apparently are supposed to still be really tough for me because I'm a cancer. I'm just like, this shit feels great. Like, cause I don't feel like I'm being burned or not. <laughs> like I'm not my entire life isn't just like decimation decimation um I also think that like for me uh I was realizing yesterday that I was like I think I lean into the shadow side of my rising like which would be Virgo so when I'm like feeling really uh when I've processed stuff and I'm listening to my body and like I've done my body homework, so to speak, <laughs> like I'm doing my, the trauma work, but then my body's like been being like, do this, do this. Okay. Then it's next. Like I've gotten into a rhythm over, especially the past year of just like, I have tons of tools and practices and things. And it's become less like a language that I'm learning and more now a language that I'm like living and speaking. And like, just, it's, you know, like when you first learn French, you're like, translating everything in your mind and you're like how do I okay yeah this and that's how I conjugate that verb and then you get to that tipping point with any skill where you're like okay now I'm just doing it um and so I, I that's what I attribute it to and, and that's not to like be like braggy but to also give encouragement to other people is like hey like the more you do this work the more it makes these 
astrological, like energetic shifts, just you learn to weather the storm, especially like this is the piece with water sign energy is like, you can't, unless you freeze it, you can't hold on to water. Right. And so, um, it's always kind of about just being in flow with whatever comes up which like we're notoriously socialized to be bad at (laughs) because we're like control that's how I find safety and water sign energy is like the fuck not like I'm gonna make you cry now (laughs) like you're gonna resist this thing all right it's gonna intensify which can be really intense but as you do more like I can speak to that from my experience of like when I first started real like really doing shadow work and trauma work and processing just so much shit. And like it started kind of in April 2021. I was a mess like for a really long time. Uh and I often was like, I'm absolutely certain I'm doing this wrong, but I have no idea what else to do. So I guess forward it is like, (laughs) no, no one else is giving me a map. And I, all I can do is listen to my body and it feels like fucking up, like for a really good long time, like at least two years, I think I was just like, I don't know that this is getting better. It's not getting worse. Like it's, just a general level of like holy shit what the fuck so uh, like um and so I wanted to share that and like if you're depending on where you are in your journey with things that like I hope that kind of that there's some encouragement in that that like you will get to a place as you continue to like learn these skills because they're skills like I really I I kind of hate when people talk about uh I don't hate it. I just, I find it really weird when people talk about kind of things that are like, you can learn it as like, as if there's some, like, you know it or you don't know it. Like sometimes on TikTok, people like say stuff and I'm just like, I mean, we can learn how to like emotionally regulate. We can learn how to like be with our pain. We can learn how to like trust other people. Like it's not easy. Like I'm not saying this like glibly and being like, shit's like a walk in the park. It'll be fine. No, it's fucking kind of ass a lot of the time. And you're just like, Jesus, what the hell? Why did I sign up to do this? I want to go backwards. I just like, can I just forget it? Like time out. I don't want to, I don't want to do it anymore. But like, unfortunately, And also, fortunately, as most things are like a duality (laughs) and nuance like that, where it's like, it's a both end. Once you start, you can't really go backwards. Like you can't unknow the things, you know, Um, which is like something that I just rail against sometimes. There's parts of me that are just like, ignorance was sort of bliss, not really, but also like, fuck. (laughs) Um. So I just, sorry, I just have a question. Can you bring, can you look back at things and understand the things that were happening better now? Yes. Yeah, I can. Because so for me, the experience, and I, it could be totally different for other people, but all I can speak to is like what I understand of myself in this and kind of other nerdy things that I've read about in terms of like, self-understanding is that um I have a better concept and perspective on myself so it is easier to see me in the things and to with compassion and and non-judgment be like oh like this is how that happened um I don't know that because I survived through most of my life by like intellectualizing my emotions <laughs> just being like I'm gonna just think about it so I don't have to feel about feel about it because the feeling is overwhelming a lot of my journey has like that kind of um understanding of the context of things has come very much second or third to just building my capacity to actually feel my emotions so that they can be metabolized and they can be processed and integrated and then I can have it's very much more like a uh 
it's like a deep understanding or knowing because the emotion isn't like so overwhelming that I can't access like whatever was being blocked by like this huge fiery like amount of grief or anger or terror or rage or or whatever it is um that's kind of the only way that I can explain it is that like the felt sense of safety in my body and the certainty that I have of like uh this is where I'm going or like this is where I need to go like when my body is like I, like I can hear my body's yes so much louder before like I'm going to be clear I knew my body's no I also ignored it a lot so it wasn't that I couldn't hear it it was that like we're so socialized in society to just ignore the no especially if you're socialized to perform femininity under patriarchy it's like fun <laughs> like, just freeze yourself just don't just be small and don't take up space and don't feel anything that's inconvenient for anybody around you I didn't so much struggle with with the um don't take up space and those kinds of things um because of some of my socialization as a child but like um the emotions piece was like a huge part to be like oh people who actually want to deeply know me have space for my emotions even if they're a little dysregulating like this community has definitely done that I, I there's like a I'm so certain there's a sass on the YouTube of like me screaming about something once because I was so fucking triggered about my marriage and I just needed a place to process and everyone was just like dump your rage here we're here for it it's fucking awesome um and like experiences like that where you learn to meet yourself it's like something that happens simultaneously. Like I don't, I, I don't really believe in the, like, you have to like love yourself first. Like there's not a linear order to this kind of shit. It's actually like, it happens in tandem where it's like, because other people love me in a way that I might be unfamiliar with or unpracticed at, then I learn to love myself differently. And then it kind of stacks. And sometimes I take that step first and I do something for myself that I didn't know that I could do. And is kind of terrifying. And then someone else says, bet, I love that. Yes. And you're like, oh, because like we disconfirm trauma in experiences, usually of connection, because most complex trauma is relational in nature. Like we were hurt in relationship and harmed and we need to be healed in relationship, which can be terrifying because people can be scary. But anyway, I could go about on about this forever. I'm gonna like it was like someone else was like, wait wit yes um yes and then totally agree with you what you said stephanie but like it's confusing in the, the retrospect yes okay uh and if anyone has other questions feel free to ask but i'm gonna hand over the mic to it i think yeah maria you had your hand up first though i would like to hear your way in first and then i will go all righty um yes to everything that Petra said um and because you know fucking Petra I love when every time you pop up I'm like yeah yeah let's go let's do it um probably because we have very similar you know nerdy interests so um and you know what I wanted to just kind of add to that too Stephanie because I, I do I love that question because um man, there's some real confusing things that I've gone through that now I can be like, yes, okay. Now now I see why, um, why I went through it. Now I can see where I grew up from. Now I see da, 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 da. And to kind of like move, like kind of where I sit with that now is there are still times, there are still a lot of times that I am not sure why things are happening or unclear of like, where's the growth in this or what what are we going to do where, where am I going to end up on this what's going to happen you know um but what I've learned is to <clears throat> what I'm learning because I'm not perfect is to trust the universe trust myself trust my system you know to be able to sit here and say I'm not sure exactly why this is I don't have enough information to know what I'm doing or why why this is happening right now but I'm going to trust, and this is where I'm 
working on too is like, I'm going to make the decision that I can in the moment and trust that that's a decision that needs to be made in that moment. And then I'll make the next one and then I'll make the next one. And I know in a week, a month, a year, I will know why I went through that or why that situation was presented with me. Now, there are some things that I'm like, okay, universe, I know why you're doing this. Okay, it's because I didn't really listen the last time and here you are going to do it again or you're forcing me to, you know, like learn things or you're also showing me the growth that I've made. But um, that there's less fear there with it um, of like thinking about what might happen in the future or what's going to, you know, um, what's going to happen in the future. And I, I don't spiral as much of this thing is going to happen. And then this thing's going to happen. And then this thing's going to happen. Or if I, you know, freeze because I have to make a decision and I don't know which decision to make. Um, it's, there's more of like that, that trust in my system of I can, I can do hard things. You know, my system is here and I have a community that supports me as well too. Um, of really just learning to follow my interests to follow my instincts um and to really work on just sitting with it and and it's that's the hardest thing it's just to be like yep okay I'm here experiencing this and it's for a reason so that's my way in all right Maria ta-da on to you Thank you. I just, I had to get up for a minute and shut the door because the washing machine was overstimulating my sensory system. <laughs> I have to shut the door. Okay. So many awesome things. And I have so, so many thoughts. And then now I'm going to try to articulate that. So let's see how it goes. Um, the energy I'm experiencing this, this spring very intensely um, with like a lot of catalysts. So it was kind of like, oh, you're, you're out of, you're awake now, your hibernation period's good. Okay, great, here you go. Like here's 10 shadow work items for you. And also like this growth and all oh, that alignment and <laughs> that you were talking about. Sure, we'll give you some of that too. But like, here's like all these things. And so I'm like, okay, great. So it was, I had like a lot of catalysts happen, you know, like when you have them all at once. and. So when I'm thinking about this, it's like, okay, I've been asking, I've been working, all of my spell crafts, my intentions have been about releasing control, coming into my highest alignment and my highest timeline. And just a caveat, I hate using the words like good and bad and high and low, but because I don't have other language for it yet, I, I say that just because I'll talk about that after. So coming into my highest timeline, releasing control, you know, like being fully aligned, feeling into the flow, doing exactly what I want, shedding all the social conditioning because I don't want to follow the rules that someone else made. I only want to follow my own rules. So <laughs> that's easy, right? No. So um, then these things show up. So it's like this belief work that, and I really think there's somewhere in there, the belief work that when I'm vibing and I'm really like feeling into the flow and I'm like in feeling like, you know, super fucking magical that it's all like sunshine and roses, but that's not, that's not what being in, you know, alignment is because it's like the growth well, the process, you know, is like the, that, that growth is happening within the shadow work, within this catalyst. And so, although, and I'm, I also, I don't even knew if I even understood what it meant to like feel things in your body, because I also very intellectual and processing and where, just so where I am right now is a lot about belief work a lot about being in the here and now and a lot about just like cre that my reality is what I created. So that's just the perspective of where I'm coming from. And I, I realize sometimes what I, sometimes when I talk into about that and get into it, it's 
um, because like I am only can share with you like in a whatever few minutes that, you know, we don't get to always get into like all of the shadow work that went along with it and, and the process and the growth. And I, I say that I think because I'm a little bit sensitive to being um, called out for being like sounding like I'm spiritually bypassing, which I have my own thoughts about that, but I, that's why I'm saying that. And actually it's more of a danger rush of why I'm saying it. Um, because like, I feel like just some of the things that I'm talking about are maybe like the greater mysteries of things. Um, but just wanted to honor like also the process of things, if that makes sense. So there we are. Um, and so it's, it's, I like I listen to a lot of Bashar. I don't know if if any of you have found them um, on TikTok, but it's a channel. Uh, Bashar is a, a, a channeled mess. Mess. Uh, per, well, channeled being that comes through uh, through someone that's channeling them. Um, and just a just a, a lot of what they say kind of resonates with me. Um, even though I this community we talk about it in so much of a, a supported way when Bashar gives messages, it's very like blunt and straightforward. But even with that, I still resonate with a lot of the messages, but okay. So where am I going with all this is I am like a very reflective person. And I do think there's something about like sorry, like my, my guides are going somewhere else so um it's like honoring that kind of like th that the past is there but it is in the past and the only thing that we have control of is is the here like the kind of the here and now um and within like like this belief work you know, it was a little bit of my belief of what being in alignment was supposed to look like and being in alignment. I think I had an old belief of that. It wasn't, I wasn't going to have like shadows or like things that would affect me, but that's not true. Cause that's not what's happening. <laughs> you know, that's not what's happening. Um, but there are times where, you know, I, I, where like kind of the barometer, I feel like, because there are times when these catalysts come up and I, sometimes I do tend to feel more neutral about certain things. And then when I was really getting pinged about um, was like these things coming up and me having to let go of people, situations, beliefs, feelings that no longer served me is actually coming into alignment that I've been like asking for this like higher alignment. And so like, that's just all been really interesting and having this human experience, there's like the part of me and some people may say it's even like the ego that doesn't have enough data on this, these new experiences, this, my shifting where I'm going, like where, where I'm coming into, we don't have enough data to know that that's safe yet. <laughs> so that's a there's that right so it's like so it's like coming into all of that feeling right like doing that work you know uh the work that I've done and the work is yet still to do because I don't really think it's ever done but the the work enough to having that relationship with with my intuition like Petra was saying like what's my yes and what's my no and really leaning hard into that of like what is my yes and what is my no and sometimes and that sometimes that shadow work comes out of that. But it's like, when that is, when I used to have a yes, that's now what, or I, that I thought was a yes is maybe now a no. And I'm shifting into that because I feel it with all of my being. There's still parts of me that's like, wait, are you sure you want to do that? Because is that safe for you to do? Like, <laughs> we don't have enough data on that yet, you know? So it's really like this interesting, right, process. And the other reason why I love doing, you know, things and having spaces like this or, you know, in other safe places to talk is because sometimes that is where we can kind of like process and like kind of check in about that, right? 
like even me talking, like literally in my sentence, there was like some things that I was maybe thinking about. And as they're about to come out of my mouth, I'm like, no, that's, that's not really, that's not really it. What you, you know, what you were feeling or what you were saying. And so it's even just like trusting that process, you know, like I, like one of my giftings is I can with the words coming out of my mouth, I already, I know if they're authentic or not. Like, cause I may say something and I can feel if it's authentic or not. And sometimes it isn't. And I'm, and it might've just been like an old belief. And then I, I'll kind of have to like, kind of dig into that a little bit more. So just even leaning into that though, I appreciate your um, listening to me and like talking, like let, just letting me talk it out because like that, that's important. Um, yeah, I think that was all that I wanted to say. Thank you. <laughs> Who is? I me? love all of that, Maria. Thanks, Go. You're amazing, um, and I love the way your brain works. Um, <clears throat> especially like, uh, I can just <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, I, I can feel the Pisces like flow. Just it's um. It's awesome. I I love it. Okay. Um I was literally thinking the the joy that I feel in feeling my feelings, all of them, like when I when I am allowed, when I allow myself to feel like angry, when I accept my anger. I feel joy in that. Um, like when I'm when I'm allowed to when I let myself cry and be sad about something, then like there's some weird like joy in that. I've even I've experienced a lot lately, like this like laughing while crying sort of um like dynamic of like being so proud of myself for being in the feeling that I just start laughing of like oh my god I'm doing it I'm feeling and like like unbridled sadness along with unbridled joy like simultaneously and I, I think that also goes along with the whole Pisces thing is like the uh the experience of duality can be really intense but the less that I, and, and I realized that a pattern that I have going on this year is letting go of my expectations. That comes up almost every single time that I'm in like a witch uh, circle or doing a release ritual or talking about like my future and planning for it and stuff. Um, and so it feels like, um, the expectations of how it's going to feel have been like being able to kind of let go of those has helped me with the resistance to the duality especially because I I didn't grow up in a family with a lot of water signs um and so my family didn't really understand my emotions and were really uncomfortable with them. And so when I would experience emotional duality or I would experience emotions really quickly, like being upset and then being okay and then being angry or like going through like a process of like each one really quickly, they would be really confused by that. Um, but as I, as I come back to that space of being um, accepting of myself as an emotional being, the magic really is where they connect. And I think that's a really huge thing about water signs. We connect people. Water connects everything. Like in so many in so many different metaphors, I could literally, I have like 10, like locked and loaded. <laughs> like the the rain, it connects the sky, the, and the air and the earth and the ocean, it connects, you know, the land and
and people. And I keep coming back to how we're like 70% water. I remember one night I was drinking really heavily with some friends when I used to like party in my early 20s. And I had a friend who was really concerned about me. And he was like, Ocean, I haven't seen you drink water all night. And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. It'll be okay. Like, I'm just, you know, hanging out. I was like really resistant to drinking water for some reason that night. And I just remember him bringing me a cup of water and saying, you're 70% water and you're not like nourishing that. Like, I can't remember exactly how he put it, but he was like, you're not like replenishing that. And that stuck with me, like has always stuck with me. And so I always think like, have I replenished my water? And it's come out even in my relationships of like that. If you know me, if we're close, it's like going to be like one of the first things I ask you, have you had water? Have you had some water today? Like, did you drink some water? Or like somebody will be like, I'm not feeling well or something on you know their post. And I'll be like, oh, you know, go get some water and get some rest. And it's, it's definitely a passion of mine. Okay, I'm gonna relinquish to Maria. Thank you, Ocean. <clears throat> um, I am not a witch that has um, like looked at, I, I did my chart, my astrological chart a long time ago, but I realized I, I put in, I was five minutes off on my birth time. So now I gotta go back. So I don't know what rising, I don't know what all the things are, but I'm my, what is it? Sun sign is, is Pisces. And I, I feel like, I feel like heavily connected to that Pisces energy. Um, okay. So that's not what I wanted to say, but just sharing that. Um, so I wanted to just kind of come back about like the thing, like when we're going through these heavy, heavier times, words are hard when you're a deconstructed witch, cause it doesn't seem, it's really fucking hard. Um, why, why do I say that? It's because like the, the, the perception of, of what's going on, you know, like how we perceive things and how we label things as good and bad. And that's really what I like wanted to share is like when we're going through these high, um, <clears throat> intensity, our mo our nervous systems, like really engaged at a high level and maybe anxiety, fear and those types of, of emotions, um, sadness, fear that, you know, is, is strong. And it's like the, the thing that that's like, you know, the old, um, the old messaging or some of you may have got of like, well, just, you know, pick yourself up by your bootstraps and just, you know, go on and do the thing. And it's like, that's like everything all of that is like completely opposite of, of what I've been, you know, trying to engage with. It's like, you know, when, uh, just when we're going through these things, you know, feeling like, because our nervous systems are engaged, it's like, we have tools, you know, to kind of process, to feel it, to maybe understand that maybe it was a protection or maybe I'm experiencing this and I know it's like realizing maybe it no longer serves me or I just don't prefer, you know, prefer the situation anymore, whatever the case may be. Um, but I just felt it was important to say like, when we're in those times, it's not like labeled as, as bad or I'm not labeling it as, as a bad thing, you know, but like when we're looking at like being happy is good and being sad is bad. And you know, doing this deconstruction process is really just about your feelings are your feelings and you are okay to feel exactly how you're feeling because that is how you feel and that is okay. And then working on the tools to like help with that processing to feel your feelings and whether, you know, and, and then as witches, um, you know, I love the release part of what we do. You know, I get to feel my feelings and process it and then have a space to like release things in gratitude because realizing a lot of those feelings a lot of times were like protections. Um, and when I was talking about before about I'm having, I'm having, uh, I'm having, uh, I'm 
I'm in fear of judgment about being called like spiritual bypassing because of the things that I'm thinking about. And so, because what is like I'm thinking about are things like when Bashar says, if you don't prefer that, you don't prefer it. So now that you know that, do something else. And it's like that duality that Ocean was talking about is like, well, that just sounds so easy, doesn't it? And so it's like, it is that easy, but it's also not. It's also all of this like work, you know, all of these things that kind of come up. But so like, as I'm experiencing this, um, these catalysts, I'm, you know, wanting to feel the feelings that are coming up and experience that emotions. But I'm also asking myself like this, uh, regarding the situation that it is, maybe regarding um, the, yeah, just regarding the experience that it's presenting is like, do I prefer this? And if the answer is no, and it's something that I've been engaged with, it's it's just like a shift. So, and it is like, in sometimes it, it, that nervous system engagement happens and then, you know, kind of making these bigger shifts. And I just feel like, obviously, so with the springtime, with the energy waking up, it's like giving that energy. And it's like, you know, being so excited for like the sun to come back and having these later nights, but then like also remembering now for like, now that I'm actually taking data on this, that this is the energy of the season. <laughs> I'm like, great. So anyways, Petra, thank you. Um, I just wanted to say two things kind of just about what you were saying, Maria. One of them is actually kind of like, like is this an apology I don't know <laughs> kind of I feel like the last time you shared about this stuff I was a little spiky in the comments um because I have a lot of trauma with spiritual bypassing and so I just wanted to say thank you for sharing what you shared um even though it was like a bit of danger rush for you and and I totally understand and I also wanted to be really clear that like I don't receive anything that you're saying as that as someone who like I know the last time you shared I was like these things and that was from a place of being triggered because I've had people try to love and light shit and also religious trauma which is Christianity is great for that they just don't say love and light they're just like Matt what <laughs> invalidate and I'm like no <laughs> um, and so I just wanted to say that because I'm, I wanted to be clear because I think that that is kind and compassionate because I care about you. Um, and, and also say that, like, I think that for me, spiritual bypassing is also so much more about like invalidating the pain, right. Is being like, just dissociate from the pain. I don't think, I think that, you know, if we're saying to people who are poor or, or unhoused, like you choose your reality, like that shit's fucked you'd never do that. Like, I know you. Right. And it's like, that's not, I think that I like the, like, if you don't prefer something, then like, what are you going to do about it? And, and I think that that speaks to like, more so a reminder to us as human beings that we do have sovereignty over our lives to a certain extent, even though we live under capitalism, <laughs> we do have like agency to make different choices. Sometimes we can't make those choices immediately. And sometimes like, the lack of being able to respond to something with immediacy um when someone says like you can choose something different can feel very like shame provoking because we're stuck and frozen and that makes a lot of sense to me but it doesn't make it like less true like as someone who i'm has been living in like a relationship that has been not supportive but because of financial reasons i haven't been able to leave and just that is not a situation that me ever before in my life would have thought that I would be here but understanding that I was like oh I'm not like flawed or fucked up or stupid or whatever whatever derogatory shameful noun that I can think of or like thing that I can think about myself that uh, because this is my life circumstance but in, even in this place where I am here for now I do ha still have choices and it's actually something that when we look at um, what helps people have resiliency through trauma 
being able to find places where we have choice gives us resiliency. So I just wanted to like share that because I think it's really important because I'm like, if we just kind of look at it as like a macro thing, like there are things that we have choice about and they're very usually like personal, right? It's about like me and my life and what I can do and who I can like stop spending time with or who I can keep like try to spend more time with like those kinds of of things in in my perspective anyway. Um, I think I, I struggle with the spiritual bypassing of like collective issues because I think they, they, it's, it's the, like, I'm abdicating of myself and my responsibility to like humanity. And I'm like, well, that's fucking cute. That's not how this works. We're all stuck on this space rock together. So like, we kind of have to figure it out. Like, um, and, and that more so is the thing that, you know, like, or growing up in Christianity where like, we were just like I was in, in my, my upbringing, just kind of taught not to care about things that I deeply cared about because like, whatever the world's going to end and Jesus is going to come back. So fuck it. And I was like, I like, don't really like that plan. Like, I, but, but things are fucked up now. Like, people are hurting now. Well, I, I can't like, I'm s- telling me to not care about things doesn't change that I care. It just makes me feel invalidated. So, and that's, I've never, I want to be so clear that I've never received that from you. Like ever. I think you were like an incredibly compassionate person. And I really like when you bring these things through, um, I, I learn a lot from you. Um, even if sometimes it like taps close to things that are a little spiky for me, it's like, it's always very welcome. Um, thank you. You're May, welcome. Can I respond before as yeah. well? Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I so appreciate you, Petra. I mean, when you brought it up, it, it just gave me a pause to like a sounding board. You know what I mean? And because I don't want to, because what we're doing here is like feeling our feelings. Like that's so much of what, you know, we do. So it's kind of like, it just gave me pause and, you know, I wanted to think about it but also like still want to talk about the things that I'm feeling and experiencing, but also that's kind of, so that's like, so when, you know, when I'm presenting something, you know, making sure that I wasn't, you know, not being compassionate or that I wasn't, um, you know, cause when I said that, it's just like, you know, I, it's like, I don't, we don't get to talk about like the 20 years of therapy and the, you know, the three years of shadow work and, and, you know, like where you're at. Um, but where like and where I was kind of where I'm kind of in the mindset is is because I feel like I'm feeling shifts bigger shifts in my life happening faster and and it's like so I spent most of my childhood up to 20s probably early 30s like in survival mode where decisions were made from from a place of survival of how, how can I do the thing because I don't see anybody else helping me. So like, what do I need to do? And so career choices, financial choices, relationship choices were made for safety and survival. And I'm no longer at that place of, or I've, I've, I don't know, you know, but I don't think I am. (laughs) So, you know, I don't feel like I need to make, I feel like I am safe. I know that I am safe and I'm, I'm safe and that I want to make decisions not based off of that response of survival mode, but out of trying to like exploring, you know, what is an alignment, being open to the possibilities of the universe that I don't know yet and not, not uh, shutting doors on opportunities at this point, even if like the hard shit is, is here, you know, like even though that the deeper work and the harder work is like coming out. So like when, what, what, while I'm exploring this is because I do want the shifts universe, like make no mistake. Like (laughs) I'm, I'm ready for change and for shifts. Right. So (laughs) I don't want to like muddy those waters. And I do want to, I do want to shift away out of that grateful for the experience I learned a fucking lot and I wouldn't you know like wouldn't right be here if if uh if I hadn't gone through all of that you know so that's where I am with like kind of listening and bringing in 
different perspectives of people that are like specifically talking really ab about like shifting and maybe a little bit faster than I have done it in the past because that's what I want. That's what that's what I feel like I want right now. Um, but I but I also I always like appreciate um, like everybody said, like I always appreciate everything you 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 have to offer and learn so much from you as well. And like I said, I have a special place in my notebook for Petra when you recommend a book that I you know we write down. So well, because <laughs> they're all awesome. And like I also appreciate so great, like so awesomely the like the Cliffs notes because you know like you you have like deep dived into these things and then like bringing it into these space and offering like these bits and like of nuggets. And like, I so appreciate that. So thank you. Aw, thanks Maria. I really appreciate that. And, and like, yeah. And I, I also was like, did I just like be like, here's a whole spotlight just on you, Maria. So I was like, if that was uncomfortable, I, it. I just was like, I felt really like I need to say this because I'm really aware that like, I was a spiky about this last time this came up and I want to be clear and and like kind because to me I'm like hey the, here's the context and also like this is not how I view you because I, I think that that's important I think that like repair is something that I value so much and not that like there was a rupture or any like you know what I mean but it's like I just think that like you know I think so much in our society we like we're kind of taught to like assume like other people are like they think that we like them and things are great and like what don't want to and I'm like as someone who's experienced trauma like that's not how my brain works so when other people come to me and are like hey like I think you're fucking awesome I'm like sometimes I'm genuinely surprised I'm like what and so it's just like I, I think that that matters and I think that like modeling that in spaces like this when we're like hey I might not have like done this the way that I wanted to before or like that was authentic to like how I truly feel about you I think that that shit's important because our society's really trash at being like apologizing and like owning shit and being whatever and I'm like I think this is actually like maybe the most important part of shadow work is being like I might not have done that in a way that was like in integrity with myself so I need to talk about it I love you Petra and oh, I, I, I also think uh, the last my last comment on it is is to like is why that exact scenario like the dynamic is why I have a hard time answering questions on a text or like when someone comes to our social media and or maybe one of you have even like asked us a question on our social media and it's like how can I answer this question without getting into it and even in these spaces we get to get into it but like then you know it only for two hours because we could get into it for so longer so that and that's why you know like foundations program just because it's a it is a process it's there are no quick fixes um that because if there was I I would have found it <laughs> by now <laughs> I don't think there are but if you find a quick fix I wouldn't mind knowing about it <laughs> just kidding okay Ezra <laughs> Yeah, that actually touched on exactly what I was going to say, or part of what I was going to say, because I had a lot, um, but we'll see how much of them I have access to um, now. And so, uh, but basically, yeah, like I have so many thoughts and it's like, let's see what, what I can articulate here um, and now, <laughs> but like, I've th been thinking about, a lot about um, that conversation with Petra as well, because I think that once you start healing, you do have a, there are a lot of places and people um, that do seem to be kind of encouraging spiritual bypassing. And I think that's a, it's a good question to continue asking yourself, <laughs> like, um, and feeling into it. And um, just in case, because I think that there's a lot of things that seem from the outside to be the same thing. Um, you know, like it, what came up for me are like symptoms um, often look very similar and that doesn't mean that the cause has to be the same. Um, 
but I think that while I was sitting with um, wondering if what I was talking about spiritual bypassing, I was forced to think of what the differences are. <laughs> and that actually allowed me to really consider it without um, feeling, you know, attacked because that word was there, like, or worried, right? Because instead I was like, okay, what would make what would make this spiritual bypassing? And I think that um, a big part of that, at least from what I understand as people use it, is that you tend to just completely say, oh, well, I just won't feel those bad things, pure love and light. And if you have anything bad, you know, quote unquote, that you're feeling, that you're, if you're suffering with something, then you, uh, that's your fault. So, you know, go ahead and just like feel that over there. Yeah. Like, you silly head I don't know, like I was gonna say something meaner in that voice but like and instead of kind of like let's work this through together um and let's feel the full spectrum of human experience so that we might be able to one day like be able to step back and choose to feel what we want to feel because I think a part of it is like when you say that like you create your own reality right there's obviously a lot of reasons that that would feel like a shitty thing to say when you're living through, like when you have experiences and you see other people having experiences that they seem to not prefer. So like, what do you mean you can choose this stuff? And I think for me, what came up when I was um, kind of meditating on that was like, I feel like I'm always the person that's going to bring up colonization. So, but like, it feels like a way in which our minds have been colonized to specifically think in a certain way. And like, if we were born, like some people are into essentially a, a prison situation, and that's all we ever see, how are you going to believe anything else exists? Like, it's not, and no one's saying that like, that's your fault. It's just that there is a process to get out of it. Um, and I think that, you know, we're all just trying to figure that out together because even though I often, like I'm at the point where, <laughs> yeah, exactly. If I don't bring it up, Petra will bring up colonization. But I've been thinking a lot about how, oh, I know. we we all do. That's one of the reasons I like this group. Literally the first time I ever came to a SAS mass, I was like, someone mentioned the word colonization. Oh my gosh, I found my people. Um, but the, <laughs> uh, like I had recently been doing like a research project and I had to, one of the articles I read was about, was from the 1980s and it was about the militarization of language and how, and one of the things they, um, likened it to was how Inuit populations have many words for snow. Like they, their lexicon for snow is, you know, huge because they're a snow-based culture. And basically because we are a war-based culture, we have a lot of war words. And so literally it's built into our language. It's built into our experiences. And like, we have to like slowly, you know, deconstruct the war like setting that we have around us in order to um they in in order to figure out uh what we want to keep but until but it's like it because it is a process it's a ongoing thing um that can't happen immediately and anyone who kind of just you know one day just seems to be able to step into that and just like oh i'll just choose to be happy all the time that's totally fine <laughs> like that that feels like where the bypassing is happening. Um, whereas I think here we always <laughs> encourage people to cry. And if someone has, you know, an experience of anger, they're allowed to have it, even if it isn't like, you know, in accordance with their highest <laughs> self, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say. Hey, it came out okay, I hope. <laughs> Yay, it did. It's, you know, and it, I always kind of come back to, you know, thinking about like 
manifestation, you know, and, and like that process. So, and it's like, okay, so having that belief, you know, like, <clears throat> for example, uh, that I just, I want to be a full-time uh, work. I, I want to have all my needs met and be in abundance and be a full-time witch. Okay. And not have like a nine to five. So I, from what my understanding is to this point, like I know that if I do not believe that with all of my being, that, that is, is kind of, you know, how I will come into alignment with that type of energy is believing that, that I can. And so that's kind of where, you know, like I start to explore those things and, and I just think it's a great, you know, thing to bring up like about colonization and about um, you know, like people that are in difficult situations and saying like, well, if you just don't prefer it, you know, like choose something else. Like I, I absolutely, um, understand. And, and also like with that too, like there's no judgment in any of that, like where, wherever you are, like, you know, like there's, there's no judgment, only like compassion for the situation and, if someone, you know, wanted to change or was trying to, and whatever, like their, their process, you know, was for that, if that, if that kind of makes sense. But like, when, when I'm thinking about these things, when I'm talking about these things, I'm thinking about them in the realm of like manifestation and wanting to embody where I want the universe to meet me. And so that's where my brain is at right now. And I'll pass it off to Ocean. Um, yeah, so I, that kind of ties me back to what I was trying to articulate, but I wasn't exactly getting out earlier about, um, it's, we, we manifest what our nervous person, what our nervous system perceives as safe, um, is kind of the conclusion that I've come to so far, I guess it's not really a conclusion, is my working theory, I'll call it that. Um, so, especially in the case of like, repeating patterns, um, especially ones that are as like baked in as social conditioning. Um, and, and it's also absolutely a component of what Ezra was saying about um, like only having the understanding that you do of the reality that you exist in until you know more, um, unless you have actual, like, unless somebody introduces the idea to you of letting go of, like, the possibilities, um, or letting go of the expectations, sorry, not the possibilities. Um, although those are two sides of the same coin, aren't they? Um, then uh, you're going to, I mean, everybody wants to be happy. Everybody wants to be safe. Like you inherently want, like desire those things, like from, you know, the moment that you're born. And so, um, when we learn safety as control, then we will keep manifesting situations in, in which we must control and in, in which we must try to control. Because I, I am absolutely of the mind that control is an illusion. Um, Anytime I believe that I have control over something, I am either denying my magic or um, I'm, it really, yeah, that really just feels like it sums it up. Like it feels like I'm denying my magic when I think I'm in control of things. Because if I believe my magic is inherent to me, the more that I experience it, the more that I'm like, oh, 
I'm just becoming more myself. I'm not becoming more than myself. Okay, go ahead, Roxanne. Okay. Um, oh gosh, I've had so many different thoughts <laughs> and sensations and everything else come up while we've talked. Um, oh, I don't even know what's going to come through um, at this point, but I just knew that I had to something. I don't know. It's just one of those things. Um, with this, when we were on the spiritual bypassing and Ezra, you said something, you know, about emotions and it's really like spiritual bypassing is just bypassing your emotions. It's staying in that unsafe state of not being able to feel the full array of your emotions and only focusing on what is considered the high vibration emotions or good emotions or whatever word we want to use for it. And oh my goodness, it's, so that was one thing that came to me and it leads back then, of course, Ocean started talking about the nervous system and regulating nervous system and that, yes, that has a lot to do with being safe, um, with processing the emotions and feeling the emotions as we are um, doing the shadow work. Um, it's a big part of the shadow work is leaning into those emotions, these emotions that we were told for so long that were wrong, that were supposed to like suppress and everything else. And with us working on like deconstructing a lot of these beliefs that we've been taught that have been ingrained into our society and have been modeled for us. It takes, it takes a lot out of us sometimes and it can bring about, you know, being, feeling more exhausted and everything else. But that's so much of that is because we're so focused on the mental aspect of it that we're not giving our body what it needs during that time. Um, and not supporting it the way it needs to, as we're like working through this and trying to like describe some of the things that we go through, um, the verbiage like is so hard. English is so hard with us doing this work and finding those words to really convey what we're experiencing and how our views are changing and not going back to that very like verbiage of these harsh dualities. Cause everything is, there's always going to be duality. That's how we even exist is through duality. Um, and I think sometimes we get caught up all right, I keep saying we, and I hope y'all know I don't mean we. <laughs> oh, and this is where English is hard. Um, get so caught up with the idea of a different verbiage that sometimes it's to remind ourselves that it's okay that we don't have that verbiage yet. And that that is the, the part of leaning into that compassion or the fact that we have a language that is so just not working for us. It doesn't have the words that we want to use so that we can really convey what we are experiencing and how duality is seen all throughout our lives and being able to represent that in a way that's not harsh, like harsh is the word that keeps coming up for me is that it's really like it's an either or in our society when it's really it's both and trying to find the verbiage to show that it's both and that both are okay. And there's nothing wrong with either one can be a little bit difficult. So I feel like I just kind of just like rambled. It's what it felt like. And I don't even know if I touched on everything that came up, but oh, also if anybody is anyone who does like the astrology readings or anything, or if anybody out here does that kind of stuff, if you can like 
drop it for me because I just realized as we started talking about, oh, my son, my moon, I just looked at my chart and I have only one water sign and that's it. And I was like, this is interesting. So yeah, that was random, but yeah. Okay. Maria, go ahead. I'm going to stop talking now. So uh, I'm having like a moment just to announce it for the records. Um, I'm having some revelations. So what I, where I'm like, <laughs> where I'm thinking, it's just like where I am in this very moment. And because people ask me, and I don't know if anyone else experiences this for a very long time. Well, what do you want? I, at this moment in time, do not like that question because <laughs> I don't have an answer. Um, I know what I, so I know what like feel, I know what feels good that, I, that I would I, like in a particular situation to make that decision. Like, do I prefer it or do I not prefer it? But when you just ask me, like, what do you want to do? Like, what do you feel would be in alignment with your truest self? Right in this moment, like, I don't have an answer to that question. And I haven't probably ever. There's been lots of things that I have liked, lots of things that I've done, lots of experiences that I'm grateful to have. I've learned a fuck ton of things. But like, you know, like I describe it, I don't know if you'll have like TJ Maxx or Marshall's, it's like that store. And like when you're just walking around with a store with like a ton of knickknacks and you come upon the thing and you're like, oh my God, that's so awesome. Like, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> I'm looking for like, when someone asks me, what do you want to do? I'm looking for that response. Like, yes, this is awesome. So, um, and it's like of all of these shifts and all of these things that I feel are happening, but also I'm getting messages to be patient, which is really confusing because <laughs> you're getting all this like energy feeling like I want to take action, but also like be patient because I feel like it will come. It will be a culmination of all the things that I love to do and it will all be fantastic, but it's just not available right in this or it's, you know, it's not, um, I'm in this process still toward it. And so, um, okay. So back to manifestation, like, because I think about manifestation so much and um, perhaps, you know, right now, it is just to shed the belief with, that it won't happen, right? So like, just to, sh just to not necessarily know that I 100% believe within the fire of my being that I'm going to do X, Y, or Z, but perhaps in this moment, it is just the call to just, sh sh just shed the belief that it's not possible because it is possible. Does that make sense? So it's, I feel like that's the only thing that I can truly like commit to like 100% is, is just that the belief that it's, it's all possible. So that sounds good. That sounds, that sounds, I having an emotional response. So I know that that's something. All right. We have some hands. Reactions. What? I like, I just forgot how to use Zoom for a minute. Okay, <laughs> ocean. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> yeah, sorry, I was writing down my thought, um, but uh, it doesn't exist yet. Like, that's what keeps coming up for me is like, it's that, that ingredient, Philly or the 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 inspiration of the the object right I think about that um I don't know what it's called but there's like this idea of reality is only what you can perceive so everything behind you just ceases to exist like in this theory um again I don't I don't know what it's uh called but um and so because you haven't seen the object yet, it doesn't exist. And like, I, I was getting this image while you were talking of like waiting in line for a roller coaster or a ride, like at Disneyland or something. And like, like, especially being like a kid and like just that antsy feeling of like, I just want to get on the ride already. And why isn't this line moving? And you want to climb all over the railings and, 
you know, poke all the flowers as you go by or whatnot. And uh, it's like, what do you do when you're waiting in line? And it's like some parents bring like snacks for their kids to enjoy while they're waiting in line. And some people, you know, like let their kid play games on their phone while they're waiting in line. Some people talk to their kids while they're waiting in line about how they're excited. It's like, what do you do while you're waiting in line? Well, you have no idea how good it's about to be. What, what do you do in that moment? Okay, go ahead, Jen Marie. I'm going to leave you guys with that. Okay. I love our conversation today. It's absolutely amazing and very freaking aligned with this, this new moon. So sometimes we can get to the point that that ideal reality, the aligned life, the the what do you want to do when you grow up stuff, uh, we get pieces of it, but not the whole picture, right? And that not getting the whole picture is important because if we get the whole picture, we narrow the possibilities of how that's going to like show up for us because things show up for us in ways that we can't possibly imagine sometimes. And so like for me, I've gotten to the point where I know what my idea, I know what that looks like. I know uh, that I will be living at a sanctuary for witches. Uh, I will have very small, uh, like tiny house that the only things that I engage with are things that I have a deep and meaningful relationship with. And so that's what I will be surrounding myself with. I know that because that is what my physical body is literally asking me to do. Uh, my energetic body is literally asking me to do this and to, to navigate life in this way. Um, my entire lived experience has been pointed in the direction of this sanctuary for magical practitioners and how that is going to like function and all of that. I see a like large barn like structure with a bunch of witches in it, uh, eating together and crafting together as a way of like supporting a larger community, as well as having places where when witches are overstimulated or overwhelmed when they're mainstreaming, they have a place to come back to reset and rebalance and go back out into their like day-to-day -day life. Um, I know that that is the direction. I don't know where that's going to be. I don't know exactly what that looks like other than that barn structure and the trees have moss and it's close to a body of water, of moving water. Um, but I don't, I, I'm getting really good pictures of like, who's going to be there with me at this point, but everything that we do, um, the things that I do in order to align with that reality is my day-to-day -day life. I try to live it like I am, uh, creating deeper relationships with the things that I have, uh, sending the things that I don't have the time and space to have a relationship with on gifting it to someone else or sending it somewhere else. Um, I'm slowly moving toward that, that dream by doing that. But also every time I gather together with you guys, every time I do a live, every time I do a workshop, every time I help a witch align with themselves and find balance, all of that is participating in that dream and bringing that closer. And so it does come clear. And it's absolutely those things that Maria is talking about of like, oh my God, this is absolutely perfect. This is exactly what I want to be doing. It's the stuff that you could just like, you know, go and go and go and go and go and go and go on. And it's, it's exciting. It's there. And yeah, your lived experience, everything that you've been doing up until that clarity comes into play with what is, you know, on the 
on the other side of the present moment, it's so hard. <laughs> to time is hard to explain. Um yeah, today was great. Does anyone have we ha still have like nine minutes left of of sass if anyone wants to get all up in there. Go ahead, Hood. Um, I was just thinking through um in regards to like all that's been talked about too of like something I've realized or have kind of worked through is I was so resistant to my mainstreaming um, that I'm doing currently, like my job. I was still, I was so, um, it, I, I do not want to be doing this. So I need to figure out what I need to do to change it. So I don't, not going to be doing it right now. Um, and what I've come to realize, it like hit me sometime this week of like, I am now at a place where I'm not resistant to it right now because it is what is in my life right now. And it's what I'm doing right now. Um, and that resistance was holding me back because I spent so much energy on that resistance to the things that I want to change. Like how, they need to be changing. I was, that's where my focus was, you know, um, was God, I just, this is that everything was, Oh, my job, this, my job that I know this, is, Oh, this is, I related everything back to my job. Um, but now I have worked through that. I mean, I'm not, of course, hundred percent perfect, but where I know it's not what I'm going to be doing forever. I know it's not what I want to be doing right now, but it is what I'm doing right now. It is, there's, there's important stuff. There's growth in there still. There's things that I could still be dealing, you know, like working through on becoming my truest self. Um, and that, that release of that resistance is like a huge weight off of my spiritual shoulders um because that that resistance and then and I'm can almost guarantee I'm not alone in that feeling of like oh I have to go be with the mainstream I'm gonna go be with other people who don't you know haven't you know gone through some shadow work or gone through this deconstruction or you know I have to like go in and deal with you know, people who are going to have an emotional reaction to something that I say. And um, I've realized that over the past even like week or two weeks or so, like I'm not as resistant of going into work anymore. I don't love it, but I'm there now, you know, and this is where I am. And it's a, it's a good contrast that we were talking about. I forgot who brought it up. Contrast of like, this is not what I want to be doing. Like, and this is not in my highest alignment. This is not necessarily my truest self in the future. So now I can be hone in on, I'm like, Maria, I don't, I don't know what it is that I want to do when I grow up, but I know what I don't, I know what feeling signatures I don't want to have. Um, and I think that is a huge por por the piece of it and point of it too, is like learning what you don't want to, because like Ocean said, it's not even... I, I don't know about it. I don't know. The, what's going to happen is probably something that I just can't even imagine right now. Um, and I am I'm, am now truly open. To, I've been, before I would have been like, yeah, I'm open to that. But now I am truly open to the different possibilities that I may not even know what's going to be out there. So just that I'd share that as felt thing to, to share. So. Stephanie, the Zoom floor is yours. I think that, you know, I get really caught up too in like what the physical destination is going to be for myself too with the manifestation of like, I want to be doing this and I want it to look like this. And, you know, and a lot of the advice is, you know, dream it and imagine it and imagine doing it. And, you know, I follow all of the same stuff. But I think possibly, uh, a more fruitful or wise thing that we could be doing is like you're saying just like the acceptance and whether you get to the idea of where you want to go or not is the feeling state you know of what it would be like then 
of peace. And if you can have peace in your shitty job now and peace in that beautiful, amazing barn that you will eventually have full of witches, like peace is peace, whether you're in a concentration camp or wrongfully imprisoned or born into poverty or born into a million dollars, like peace is peace is peace is peace, regardless of what the destination looks like. And we want this particular destination because we think it will be what matches up to our manifestation wishes but we may never get there. You know, I don't know. I don't know that we have that much control over whether we get there or not. And kind of going back to like the spiritual bypassing or the, the privilege that we have, you know, like what if you were born in the slums of India, like you're probably not going to get to some amazing, beautiful Caribbean Island where you, I don't know, eat fruit and live on some palace or whatever like you know that's a that's a big leap that all people in all places and all of the world or if you're born in a trailer park and never heard of any of these ideas before you know or if you're born in any kind of poverty or you know like there's just so much the colonization piece you know like and that does sting or make you think like how are those people going to get to these big, beautiful, amazing, luxurious things that you see a lot of the manifestation kind of influencer people having? But those people can have joy and they can have peace and they can have love, you know, and so like Victor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning, you know, he found all that stuff in a camp concentration camp, you know, so I mean, we can get the feeling piece of it. And who knows what the destination will be. And so I think what maybe like you are already doing that even with the shitty job, you know, like, and maybe we are all already doing the end in the middle of it before we've gotten to the end because the end may or may not come kind of. It's more of like the feeling along the way of the journey and who knows what the end is going to be. Anyway. Good morning. Um, I don't know that I have a whole lot to say. I just, the whole time I've been listening to everyone, I've had this feeling of sitting on like your birthday and someone gives you a gift and all you have is a wrapped present. You don't know what's inside it. You don't, you know, it came from someone that you loved or loved you and you've got it. It's, you just don't know what's inside it. And I think that's all I'm going to do from now on when I'm trying to manifest is that trying to manifest stuff doesn't <laughs> work. I don't know. It always comes in a roundabout way or not the way that you think, or it doesn't come and then it's not aligned and oh, move on. Um, yeah. So just sitting in that joy of expectancy, knowing that you do have it, you just don't know what's inside and you'll pull the bow and you'll unwrap a little bit every time. And, <laughs> so that's all just just I'd like to add also that when it is time to make decisions as far as like what that is going to look like when that time comes you'll know it you'll be needing to make those decisions right and that's how those things become really clear is you're going to start having to make decisions that that are that and you know and in my case right now uh what we're doing at bright and dark is like funding all that that's what we're working toward and so those decisions of having to be kind of clear about what that's going to look like is me right now and so i think that's that's important to note that it's going to look different for all of us our ideal and our big future our big dream is going to be very look very different for for all of us um and it's supposed to right it's supposed to and that being really as present as you can be with uh your life 
and and how it is unfolding is all we have to really like do. And that's the hardest part. That is the most difficult part is that maintaining presence and even knowing what presence like is and and all of that kind of stuff. Because we get so caught up in the planning of things that we miss the flow when it presents itself for us to like jump into, or we are tied up either financially or physically or whatever in this like thing that we thought that we had to do out of like fear or like, oh, I thought it was supposed to look like this and forcing it to look like this. Uh, we're not able to be free enough to jump in there. But had we just maintained presence, we would have the energy, we would have the resources, we would have all of the things for it to just like funnel into that direction. So it's, it's pretty, and I say that as like encouraging. <laughs> Your like peace that those moments of tranquility, those hanged man moments are like, they can be gold. Uh, so almost like pressure in a pressure cooker too. And then as soon as you hit that, like that moment of making that decision, it's just, it goes right in that air, that area, that direction. Oh, we're going over. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay. Thank you mods for uh, letting, letting me rant and go over. I appreciate your time and I respect your time. Uh, let's, uh, let's transition out and, uh, I, uh, you can do that however you want. Uh, I'm going to kind of walk through how I close and transition and you're welcome to join me. Hand on your heart, close your eyes, take a deep breath. This working is now closing, but the magic has just begun. We humbly thank the elements in both the moon and sun to all who chose to bless this flow we now sincerely thank you may our practice be expansive and our course be clear and true All right, guys. See you. See you later at the workshop if you're going to the workshop. See you tomorrow at the live. You guys are amazing. Bye.